studying grammar, specifically grammar studied in the Michael Clay Thompson books, actually help you improve your score on the SAT or the ACT. I'm actually working with a handful of students now, both nationally and internationally, who selected me because I tutor using grammar that is taught with these books. Michael Clay Thompson didn't make up grammar. It's just the way that it's laid out will actually help you understand it. So I teach English with my company, but we do offer math and test prep, and we get a lot of requests for those things actually. So if you're interested in learning more about how we teach, what we teach, or if you're interested in getting a free consultation with us, just look in the description box below this video and message us today. I mean, who knows? We might be able to get your student into college. I'm just saying. So if you actually want to improve your score on the SAT or ACT, you can't expect to wing it. You might wing it once when you go in and take it the first time. Or better yet, you take a free test with a experienced tutor like myself or my husband. But once you have a baseline score, you can figure out the types of questions you're missing. If you're missing a lot of those grammar related questions, you need to go back to basics. You cannot rely on winging it to get the result that you need. When I was in high school, I thought that simply taking the test again would increase my score, but I needed much more than just taking it again. I had to actually put the time in and study. Here's an example from my brand new test booklet. This is one of those double passages, and yes, you do have to read both of them, but let's check out number 27. These types of questions are very common on the SAT and it says, as used in line 53, deploy most nearly means. Most people probably think of the word deploy when they think about soldiers. However, this passage is not talking about soldiers. So how is this word used? Don't just read the line that the word is used, but read a little bit before it and a little bit after it. The word deploy is a verb, but you have to think about how that verb is used. So what is the best answer? Utilize is the best and correct answer. When I'm tutoring with students, I will present a badly written sentence to them on purpose and ask them what's wrong with it. A lot of the times they'll say, um, I know something's not right about it, but I'm not sure how to fix it. In real life, you could make those corrections, but on the test, you only have four options to choose from. Here's an example from the ACT. This is the punctuation question. Should the underlined portion of question number 58 remain unchanged or is the correct option listed? There are subtle yet important differences. Perhaps you know the answer by looking, but it's always wise to glance above the word and below the word so that you understand how the term is used in context. This is a comma usage question. So which one is the answer? Comment below if you were correct and I will congratulate you. If you know your grammar, you'll be more confident and you'll know how to select the correct answer. I love that grammar, punctuation, and usage are all included in this Michael Clay Thompson curriculum. Any punctuation or usage insecurities that students have can be extinguished with the help of these pages and me, of course. So in order to increase your confidence and actual genuine knowledge of grammar, you need to start by knowing the eight parts of speech. This sentence is universal when it comes to remembering all eight. People vacation at amazing, interesting, charming national parks. Look out for those two letter P's and letter A's. Depending on their age and skill level, students work with me on a live document to practice building correctly written sentences with each part of speech. Both public and private schools, I think, try their best to teach what kids need to know, but they're not always grasping it. Or if they are, they tend to forget it just because it's not really taught in depth. How can a teacher teach your child one-on-one? -on -one? Well, they can't, you know, not in a large classroom. At least, they won't be able to spend the time with your student that they really deserve. The students who have a one-on-one -on -one tutor, like myself or my husband, they're gonna have the advantage, they're going to understand. You just have to make that choice and say, I'm going to invest in my student. I want them to score high on a test and actually know how to do the content. Rigor amps up in middle school and can skyrocket in high school. The thing is, if you don't understand strategies and how to study or how things work, like the history of the English language and how it all is put together, you're gonna spend a lifetime guessing. And I don't want my students to feel that way. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a middle or high school student who would benefit from one-on-one -on -one quality tutoring, don't hesitate to contact us. I also invite you to watch more of our videos on this channel to learn our style and teaching philosophy. 
If you're not ready to commit to tutoring just yet, you can stay in the loop by clicking on our website and subscribing to our email list. If you subscribe, you get a free detailed list of the top 10 best books for reluctant readers. Remember that we're here to help you become smarter than the average student.